By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a really flavorful battle going on. I, there are two decks in here that, you know, could both win a flavor award, in my humble opinion. One of them is brewed by me. It's a deck called Welcome to Scarwood. It's completely, well, it's green and artifact based. Uh, it's built as a deck to compete in something called a costume party, which was an event organized by the Evan Hand, which was pretty cool. Um, and I'm playing against my brother, um, who's made a deck called Tree Folk for President. And yes, it has tree folk in it. And yes, the deck photo is in the shape of a tree. So how cool is that? Oh yeah, and his deck, I, I believe it's got most of the colors, but we'll cover that in the deck tech section. It's actually fully powered as well. It's a bit crazy. Um, anyway, if you like to go straight to the games, I know some of you enjoy doing that. You can check the description below there. You can find a timestamp that reads MTG games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the actual uh, action. Here we are going to start with the deck tech, uh, which promises to be quite fun. I'm actually going to start with the deck of my brother, Tree Folk for President. And here we see the deck of Yoop. So it's called, or I have called it Tree Folk for President for obvious reasons. It's got a lot of Tree Folk in it. Um, let's just kind of go through the Tree Folk, shall we? Because you don't see a lot of uh, a lot of those creatures in decks and I think it's really cool that he tried to make make a tribal deck out of tree folk so the first tree folk that I think is uh, one of the most important in his deck is wormwood tree folk so it's two green and three to cast it's a creature from the dark it's a four four uh, for two green you can give it forest walk but then it does two damage to you as well and for two black you can give it swamp walk and it does two damage to you so, I mean, for five mana, you get a 440. You can make unblockable if your opponent plays with those colors. Well, today he's playing against a mono green deck. So I think this card could be very valuable. Also in combination with the Birds of Paradise and of course, all the power, the Moxen and the Black Lotus and also the Soul Ring. You know, he might be able to get this 4-4 creature out in turn two or turn three, and that could be quite powerful. So I'm looking kind of forward to see this Wormwood uh, doing a lot of stuff in this in this match. Um, then another card, and it's just a one-off in the deck, but it is really cool, a Singing Tree. It's a card from the Antiquities, one green and three to cast. It's an 0-3 creature, and you can tap it to reduce an attacking creature's power to zero. And that is quite interesting. So it doesn't say like a Maze of If, take the creature out of combat, it doesn't deal nor receive any damage. No, it says reduce an attacking creature's power to zero. So he can actually still block it with another creature. And, you know, for example, if I'm attacking with the 4-4 and he's going to use his Wormwood Tree Folk to block it, uh, uh, the 4-4 with his 4-4, he can use Singing Tree to make the power of my 4-4 zero. So make my creature an 0-4. And then he kills my creature with his Wormwood Tree Folk and his Singing Tree, right? So that's a uh, scenario that's, that's possible. Also... Um, it is attacking though, so he cannot use it when he is attacking with his Wormwood Tree Folk. He can only do this effect on an attacking creature, unfortunately. Uh, it does work on Sarah Angel as well, because it doesn't say that the creature has to be tapped. It just says the creature has to be attacking. So so that's that's quite nice. Interesting. I'm hoping that uh, Yoop will be able to play this card just because I want to see it on the table. You don't see it that often. Um, now he also plays a one-off of the iconic Iron Root Tree Folk, the first Tree Folk in Magic the Gathering. One green and four for a 3-5 summon Tree Folk. And actually five defense is pretty strong in old school. It's pretty hard to kill a creature with five defense uh, in combat in old school Magic. Now um, another important Tree Folk in his deck is Gaia's Adventure. He's playing with a full playset of that. And this is going to be really interesting because Gaia's Adventure Power and toughness are each equal to one plus the number of artifacts your opponents control. So I'm playing with a lot of artifacts in my deck, uh, including relic barriers, for example. So if I've got two relic barriers out and an astronaut's transmogrant, then the Gaius Adventure is already a 4-4 creature. So this thing can get pretty big pretty quick, quickly and it's only three to cast. So maybe it's going to play a big role. I wouldn't be surprised. Now, um, the last 
other tree folk in his deck is the Argovian tree folk. And just like the Argovian pixies, Argovian tree folk reads, any damage Argovian tree folk take from an artifact source is reduced to zero. So this is something else than protection from artifacts. For example, I can still tap Argovian tree folk um, with uh, an icy manipulator. And also Argovian pixies has an added line where it says cannot be blocked by artifact creatures. Argovian tree folk does not have that. So that is quite an interesting choice, right? You would think since the tree folk and the pixies both come from the same forest that they would kind of give it the same ability, but that's not the case. Uh, it is two green and three to cast, by the way. It's a three five creature. So it has the same power and toughness as the iron root tree folk. Now, if we look at the rest of the deck, we do see um, a few very, very powerful cards that are, that are in here just to give the tree folk a chance. At least that's the way that I'm looking at it. We see four ice storms in combination with the four birds of paradise. He can he can do that trick again where he plays an ice storm in turn number two and he has ram going on and his opponent is a land behind. So he's really winning that tempo game there. Uh, he's also playing with mind twist. He's playing with demonic tutor. He's playing with, you know, ancestral recall, time walk, brain geyser. A library of Alexandria, like all the power cards are in here. So it's actually a super power deck. Another interesting choice that he has made is to play uh, with Drop of Honey. So Drop of Honey is a card from the Arabian Nights. And it reads that during the um, upkeep, um, let's see. So at the beginning of your upkeep, so of the uh, controller of the Drop of Honey, destroy the creature with the least power and it can be regenerated. If two or more creatures are tied for the least power, you choose one of them. When there are no creatures on the battlefield, sacrifice Drop of Honey. So it's only one green. It's basically a very slow way to kill to kill the opponent's creatures, but you know, it, it can backfire as well. It can also kill your own creatures because it just says at the beginning of your upkeep, destroy the creature with the least power. So that means if, if you as, as the controller has a creature with the least power, you lose that as well. So it's, it's interesting to kind of see it in this deck because I don't really see some any tricks uh, with a drop of honey here. So that's going to be interesting. It's not, if drop of honey hits the table and the singing tree is on board, for example, it's it doesn't look good for the singing tree, like, right? Let me tell you that. Uh, okay, so this is the deck of Yoop. Now let's take a look at my deck. And here we see the deck that I am playing with today. Welcome to Scarwood. Now, this is really a flavorful deck. Uh, and like I said in the introduction, I used it to take part in a Halloween costume party brewing challenge of the Ebon Hand, uh, which was quite cool. But, um, and for that challenge, I've actually attached a story to this deck. So there's probably a screenshot showing right now of my Instagram post, uh, giving you some background information about the story. So if you're interested in that flavor part, um, you can actually go to my Instagram and you can check that out in my posts. It's out there somewhere. <laughs> you know what, I, also, I will also post it in the comments uh, below if you're interested in that. Um, and now I just want to talk about all the synergies in this deck. And I'd like to start with Ashnot's Transmogrant. So you can see it in the left bottom corner of this picture. Ashnot's Transmogrant is an artifact from the antiquities for one to cast. I can tap it and sacrifice it and then target a creature uh, gains plus one plus one and is now an artifact creature. Now, especially this artifact creature part is very important because it's now an artifact creature. I can use my relic barrier to tap it down. Because it's now an artifact creature, I can use my scavenger folk, sacrifice it and kill that creature with it. Another thing that I can do is I also play with Scarwood Bandits. And Scarwood Bandits is a 2-2 with Forest Walk, but it has a very cool ability. For one green and two and tap, you can take control of target artifact. But there is a pretty big but. My opponent can pay two to prevent this from happening, right? To cancel this out. Now, the cool thing is in this deck, I'm also playing with the Winter Orb. So my idea is, I'm trying to steal it. My opponent is going to tap down two lands to prevent it, right? But then next turn during his untap phase, because of the Winter Orb, he will only be able to untap one land. So at a certain point, I'm going to win this race and he will, he will have all his land tapped to protect one of his artifacts. And in the end, I will gain control of it. So that's kind of a scenario that I'm keeping in the back of my mind. Another cool thing that I can do with Ashnot's Transmogrid is give my opponent's creature extra power 
Um, and why is that relevant? Well, I'm also playing with three mixed stones. So mixed stone is an artifact for one that reads any creature with power greater than two may not be untapped as normal during the untap step. So if I'm able to make a creature too big to untap, I can keep it tapped with the mixed stone. Or for example, I can make it bigger, tap it down with the icy, and the mixed stone will keep it tapped indefinitely. So there are a lot of little tricks that I can use the Ashnaut's Transmogrant for. Another little piece of synergy is using the Ashnaut's Transmogrant on the tracker. So tracker, also a creature from the dark, one green and two to cast for a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, I can pay two green and tap it and the tracker does an amount of damage equal to its power to target creature. And it also gets the damage of the other creature back equal to that creature's power, right? So for example, if I use a tracker to kill a 2-2 two -two grizzly bear, then the 2-2 two -two grizzly bear will also kill my tracker because my tracker also has two toughness. But what I can do with Ashenaut's Transmogrant is make it into a 3-3, three -three, so then it can start killing 2-2 two -two creatures with it without destroying the tracker. Now obviously, the tracker also works very well with the Wailuli Wolf because I can use the Wailuli Wolf to pump my tracker. It also works great with Giant Grove. So there are quite a lot of synergies with the tracker as well in this deck. Okay, so this is my deck. Welcome to Scarwood. We've seen the deck of my brother, Tree Folk for President. Let's go to the games. Game number one, and Yoop is sitting on the left and I'm sitting on the right here, starting with the basic forest Yoop is starting with. There's a second duel, Tropical Island into a Birds of Paradise, playing a forest and there is Scavenger Folk. Welcome to Scarwood. Let's see, will we see an Ice Storm here? Oh, look at that. And he's playing a Sylvan, which is not very relevant actually, because he was on to play and he already played the Birds of Paradise, but now it becomes relevant. Look at that, Demonic Tutor into an Ancestral Recall. Full hand, drawing a card. Okay, this is kind of insane. All I have is a Scavenger Folk here, playing my third basic forest, attacking for one. You just gotta laugh when you look at all this power. There's not much I can do at the moment. Unfortunately, not finding a tracker that would be nice to cast and maybe next turn take down his Birds of Paradise. There is a Bayou probably gonna draw now. Actually, he's not doing that. It looks like, okay, now he is. Um, played the Ice Storm, attacking him again, putting him on 18. And I need a little miracle here to actually win this one. There's the uh, Wormwood Tree Folk 4-4 four, four, that he can also give Force Walk. In the meanwhile, he's still drawing cards there. Uh, tapping. Okay, finding an Icy Manipulator. At least that can tap down the Wormwood Tree Folk next turn. There is another Tropical Island. And attacking here for four. So I'm going down to 16. Is there another Wormwood Tree Folk? Okay. Passing turn here. And oh, this is interesting. Meek Stone. <laughs> oh, that is pretty sweet. Using the Icy tapping down the Tree Folk in my main phase. I was already wondering why am I doing that, but then I played the Meek Stones. That means both of these creatures are tapped. And there is a basic force, really cool altar, by the way, by Jesper Mere Force. That basic force that Juke just played out, using his Loa again to find more cards, playing his third Wormwood Tree Folk. Wow. And of course, I can tap it down again. And just attacking here, another damage. That Scavenger Folk has done four damage in total, which is quite a lot for Scavenger Folk. And look at that double Ashnaut's Transmogrant. And also a Relic Barrier. So with the Relic Barrier, I guess I could tap down his Mox. It's not super relevant. I'm choosing not to do it. Maybe waiting for his end step. And remember, he still has an active Library of Alexandria. So he's going to find some solutions probably to the problems that he's currently facing. But right now he just has to discard a City of Brass. Another damage dealt here by the Scavenger Folk. And there is a tracker, so this is looking great. I can use my Ashnaut's Transmogrant actually to pump the tracker if I wanted to. There's not really a reason for now. So next turn, I'm probably going to kill his Birds of Paradise. Oh no, Ashes to Ashes, killing both of my creatures here. He does take five damage for that, going down to 10. But losing that tracker, uh, tracker that's a little bit unfortunate. I was really looking forward to start using that one. 
And I'm pretty low on cards in uh, at the moment. I believe I only have two cards in hand. And there's a crumble on the meek stone. Oh no, this is bad news. That means he can attack now for 12. Well, I can tap down one of his creatures with the icy. I could also use my transmogrin to make one of his tree folk into an artifact creature and then tap it down with the relic barrier. And it looks like that's exactly what I'm doing here. Using a relic barrier to tap one down, using the icy to tap the other one down. Doesn't mean I still get four damage. Gonna go down to 13 here. And Yup is playing a Sylvan Library as well. So going into my main phase. Okay, playing the Scarwood Bandits. But there's so many mana on the table on the side of my opponent here. I don't think the Bandits is going to be able to steal that Wormwood Tree Folk. I mean, that would be quite ideal, but I'm not able to do that. And remember, he can also give his Wormwood Tree Folk Force Walk to make it unblockable as well. So he first has to say I'm going, that he goes into combat, then I can respond with the Relic Barrier and the Icy. There is a Strip Mine. And he's drawn so many extra cards now. It's just crazy. So he's taking away one of my forcing response. I'm using that to use my Icy to tap down one of his Tree Folk. Ooh, look at that. Playing an Ice Storm. Now I am getting quite low on lands. Only four lands. Stepping down his other tree folks. Still taking four from the third one. <laughs> oh, 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 time walk. Okay. Oh, man. And here you can really see my brother um, really winning this on the power cards here. But uh, yeah, there's not much I can do. He's going to kill me with an army of Wormwood tree folks. How cool is that? Actually giving them all forest walk. Uh, but no, there's nothing I can do against this. So showing he also has a terror in hand. Okay, so the first game is going to Yoop here winning it. And uh, we are actually going to our sideboards because we have sideboards. And, and then we'll catch back up to you in game number two. Game number two. Okay, let's take a look. At least I'm on the play, that's something. And let's hope uh, that my opponent doesn't draw an Ancestral Recall of Time Walk. And of course that Loa again, because that, uh, that was pretty disastrous. Starting with a Scavenger Folk turn one. And let's see. And he's starting with a Strip Mine. He's stripping my Forest. Playing a new one, attacking here. And passing turn. So Yup is on 19 at the moment. Nothing on the board yet. And <laughs> look at that again, a Library of Alexandria. Are you kidding me? Attacking, bringing him down to 18. And there goes the card advantage, advantage train. And now he's got nine in hand. So let's see what I can, he can do. Tropical Island, I'm kind of expecting a Birds of Paradise here. Although it looks like, okay, there's a Mox Jet. Oh, of course, and a Black Lotus. Taking it back though. Just playing the Black Lotus, drawing a card, and then he's doing it. Okay, that's a better sequence. And there's a Wormwood Tree Folk, turn number two. Actually, turn number three. And I'm playing a Tracker. And passing turn here. Okay, this is going to be very difficult for me. And I'm literally kind of getting overpowered in these games. And drawing a lot of extra cards again and having that 4-4 body is probably going to attack now. There is a Gay as Avenger. Very cool card. So it's now just a 1-1. One, one, but as soon as I'm starting play, to play artifacts, it's going to grow. It's going to get a plus 1, plus 1 per artifact that I put on the board. But now I can still kill it with Tracker. Oh, I'm actually deciding to first kill the Tree Folk here using my Giant Grove to make it into a 5-5. Five, five, and then using the tracker's ability to kill the Wormwood Tree Folk, which is a 4-4. Four, four. So this is pretty good for me. And passing turn here. I don't want to use my Scavenger Folk on his Mox. Because in combination with Ashnaut's Transmogrant, it can be quite a good combo to kill creatures. Other Wormwood Tree Folks, look at that, playing an Ice Storm to kind of slow me down here. And now I'm using the tracker to kill the Urtz's Avenger. 
Play another force, attacking for one, so he's down on 17. And, I mean, at least I cleared the board. There are no creatures there anymore on the side of Yoop, which is pretty good news for me. He's probably going to play again. Okay, there's another creature, Argovian Tree Folk, a 3-5 that has protection from artifacts. Oh, actually, it doesn't. Uh, it says any damage dealt to the uh, Tree Folk is reduced to zero. So that means I can still tap it down with my Icy Manipulator. So that's looking pretty good, actually. Now, maybe next turn I can swing in for three. The problem, of course, is, and you can see that now again, is that Yoop is drawing so many extra cards from the Library of Alexandra that he's probably going to find some answers. He's playing with Crumbles in his deck. So one Crumble here is enough to get me in trouble again. So far, it's just an Ice Storm taking care of another land. Already three forests there in the bin. And that's starting to get pretty annoying. Like when you play mono-colored, um, land removal is not as damaging. Look at that, attacking here for three, bringing him on 14, tapping down the Tree Folk and playing the Meek Stone. That means the Tree Folk doesn't untap, so that's pretty good news here. And what I wanted to say is that land removal is not as deadly. Oh, drop of honey. That's going to slowly kill my creatures. And he plays um, Gaia's Avenger, which is now actually a 3-3 because of the Meek Stone, which is good news for me. It means I can actually tap it down and it will stay tapped. And now in the upkeep of Yoop, the creature with the lowest power has to be sacrificed, which is the scavenger folks. I'm losing one of my scavenger folks. Still have two left, though. And I think it's up to me now to keep playing creatures, so I keep dealing damage to you here. But, oh man, this is going to be really tough. He is on 10. I did board in some hurricanes to kind of finish the game quickly. Ay, 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 there's another Ice Storm. Talking about Hurricane, you know, all this land removal is making it difficult to play those spells. Look at that, only two measly lands left. And yes, land removal is not as useful against the monocolor deck, but if you can play so much land removal, then it becomes useful. And look at that, another tracker on the board, and during his upkeep, the creature with the lowest power has to die has to be sacrificed that's the scavenger folk but they still have two trackers left and look at the life total here of you he's on seven so despite the fact that he's had an active library of alexandria almost the entire game he's still on seven and i should be able to at least deal, deal him two more damage let's first wait and see what he's going to do maybe Finding a crumble for the Meek Stone or the Icy Manipulator. A lot of glare on this card. I believe it's just a basic force. There's a Soul Ring. Really hard to see with the glare. But we know what it is at least. And he is passing turn here, which is great news for me. I can swing in for four. Because remember, drop of honey. Oh, Hurricane! Bam! Taking this one down, and this feels good to win against an active library of Alexandria. And it is 1-1, and that means we are going to go to game number three. Game number three. This is going to be the decider, and actually I'm already happy that I've won a game. Wow. Welcome to Scarwood. Okay, so game number three, and of course it's Yoop who's on the play here, which is a huge advantage with all the Mox and the Lotus, and of course the Birds of Paradise, starting with the Tropical Island, so I guess I'm lucky here, just passing turn, and I've got Ashnot's Transmogrant for my turn one, Underground Sea, and passing turn here, so going to untap. Let's see if I can at least cast a creature to put some pressure on the board. It looks like I can't. There's a Relic Barrier. So again, it's quite a nice little synergy on the board here with Ashnot's Transmogrant and the Relic Barrier. Oh, look at that! Chaos Adventure, which is pretty cool because it's now a 3-3 because of the two artifacts that I own. So he can swing in for 3 here, going to 17. And it's going to be interesting to see what I'm going to do next. What I can do is I use my Ashnot's Transmogrant to make my tracker into a 3-3. That will make the Gaia's Adventure into a 2-2 because an artifact goes away. And then I can kill him. 
And with him, I mean the Gaius Adventure. I'm actually not doing that. I think this is kind of a misplay on my part because I'm using a valuable giant growth here to kill the Gaius Avenger. I think it would have been a better play to make my own creature into a 3-3, kill the Gaius Avenger. Ah, oh, man, this is dirty. Mind twist, losing three great cards here. Well, then in hindsight, it was a good decision to use the uh, Giant Grove because it's now gone anyway. And I'm killing the Birds of Paradise with the Tracker. I must say it's it's really fun to play with Tracker. It's really a joy to play with this card. To kill some Birds of Paradise. Not sure why. Okay, I'm attacking with the Tracker here. Playing another Tracker. Passing turn. And here I'm making, again, a little mistake. I feel, I feel like I should have used the Relic Barrier before his draw step to tap down the book and kind of force my opponent to choose or to play the Janum Tome or to, you know, not uh, kill his other birds. There's a little mistake by you here playing that Birds of Paradise with the trackers on the table. He's basically feeding my tracker. And here I'm using the Relic Barrier. So now my brother has to decide, do I want to draw a card before he goes to his draw step, which I think is the way to do it. And he's choosing not to use it, playing a Wormwood Tree Folk. So what I can do now is I can make it into an artifact creature. Oh, look at that Giant Grove killing it again. Giant Grove Tracker combo is really, really, really working out in this matchup. He's on 9 now with the City of Brass. I'm on 17. I'm so close. And what if that Mind Twist wouldn't have happened? Taking back... The Wormwood Tree Folk with the Regrowth, attacking him for four, going down to five. Now remember, if he plays the Tree Folk, I can make it into an artifact creature with Ashnaut's Transmogrant, and I can actually tap it down with the Relic Barrier. So that is another problem here for my opponent. He's on five. That means he cannot play Ashes to Ashes. And look at that, he's playing Wormwood Tree Folk. I'm kind of expecting it to turn it into, yeah, using the Ashnaut's Transmogrant and tapping it down. Okay, so I can attack him here for four. He's gonna go down to one. Almost there, oh no, crumble! Crumble on Relic, that means it untaps, but hey, I've got two creatures. He needs to at least play another creature to stay alive. Oh no, Terror! In response, using my City of Shadows to at least get something in return for this. Ah, oh, man. I am so close, yet so far away. He's still on one. I am playing, of course, with Hurricanes. I used a Hurricane to kill him in game number two. If I can find one. Remember, there was one in my hand before I got mind twisted. Oh, man. So close, yet so far. He's just passing turn here. If I draw into an Icy Manipulator, I can tap down his City of Brass as well. So I've got quite a lot of outs here. Also, a Relic Barrier would help because the Wormwood Tree Folk is still an artifact creature. He has that Jam Day Tome, so he's just going to fish for more cards. So the longer we're in the standstill, the better it is for, for you, here. But what he needs to do is he needs to gain some life somehow. Because being on one, it's very unsafe, even against a Mono Green deck. Tapping lots of, lots of lands here. Will we see? Yeah, Brain Geyser, I thought so. Wow, I wish I had a Brain Geyser. I could just draw my way into killing Yup here right now because he's just on one. Remember, Icy Manipulator is an out. Relic Barrier is an out because I can tap down the Wormwood Tree Folk. Uh, actually, Scavenger Bandits is an out because it's got Forest Walk. So I've got a lot of cards here. Hurricane is an out. But of course, I have to draw them. Playing a Wailuli Wolf, so that's a, that's that's good because now I have got two creatures. My opponent has one creature. Remember, he's only on one life. If he doesn't play out a blocker or remove one of my creatures, he is dead next turn. Let's see what he can do. Going through his cards, still has his Jam Day Tome as well. Aye, another creature. 
another creature wormwood tree folk so another blocker on the board so this is not going to work out for me here so i need to find another way and he's actually attacking here that is interesting and oh playing a time walk okay now i get it i was like is he making a mistake i was hoping that he would make a mistake but of course he doesn't playing a time walk and a drop of honey that means i'm gonna Lose my Wailuli Wolf. And... Yeah, I think in response to that sack, I'm going to sack it to City of Shadows. I'm actually asking him if that's possible. Um, something else that I could have done just for value is make my tracker into a 3-3. It's not very relevant at the moment. Um, I'm expecting him to swing in with one of the tree folks, probably to 5-5 here, putting me on 9. Oh, maybe with both now that he has a blocker, although that would be pretty risky of him. So I'm expecting him just always oh, actually attacking with both. So that means nine damage. I'm going to go down to six. Okay, five, I guess. I guess it was on 14. Oh, and he's using his strip mine to kill his own city of brass. That is very, very clever because if I then draw into an icy... Oh, I'm not finding anything. This is so frustrating. I had him all the way down to one. Oh, this is so frustrating. And I'm actually using my giant growth here to make sure that my tracker is not um, the smallest creature anymore. So that's why I'm doing this. So in his upkeep, I'm playing the giant growth on the tracker. So it's now a 5-5 five, five. and drop of honey says the creature with the lowest power needs to be sacrificed. And I believe we actually looked this up if this was possible. Um, so, and I think the conclusion was, yes, it is possible to do this. So while the drop of honey trigger is still on the stack and okay, there's a terror. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. At least I can still use the tracker to kill a creature, which I'm probably going to do here. Um, yeah, so I'm going to use it to kill one of the creatures. It, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm um, I'm dead. I'm dead here anyway. You know, I could have I could have taken out, I guess, the the five five wormwood tree folk. Uh, but it doesn't matter anymore. He's even shown the crumble that he had to give himself some extra life if need be playing the crumble on his own book. And I'm trying to find my hurricane, not finding it. So, uh, wow, wow. This was a tight game. This was quite interesting. And in all honesty, I know I've lost, but I kind of feel like the winner here. Um, I'm really happy with my deck. And remember, this is a flavor deck. So some of the, there's a lot of synergy, yes. But also some of the choices are not optimal, obviously. Um, but I was trying to create a deck that was flavorful and also kind of worked. So let me know what you think of my deck. Also, let me know, um, have you ever played Tree Folk Tribal? Because how cool is that deck of you? <laughs> Tree Folk Tribal, fully powered, you know. When you go for it, go for it. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you've ever played with Tree Folk in old school and if you, um, you know, ever tried it out. I know that uh, you've actually played it at the online, at Odal, the online uh, Dutch old school league. And he actually won, I believe, three matches so he went 3-2 with this deck which is quite impressive um let me know in the comments below what you think of both of these decks and i just want to thank you for watching another episode of timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic um yeah and if you want to help the channel out subscribe please like what you see share it on your socials and you can also become a patron of the channel and uh, then you can actually Play against me if you want to. Um, there's probably a link popping up right now and you can click on there. That will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there you can find uh, all the information and you can already sponsor the show starting with $1 a month. Okay, well, talking about Patreon, patrons and all that stuff, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, amazing, wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Ik het als fik het als zomba kan zien.